Hey guys, Richard Holden here. This is Today at West Tech. I know technically it's already tonight, but what happened today at West Tech? Well, first of all, we dyno this. This is Mike Finnegan's boat motor, and it is an aluminum LS3 based crate motor from GM Performance. It's originally rated at 525 horsepower. It comes carbureted and not with the EFI setup, but we have a different induction system on it. We have a Holly High Ram with two Holly carburetors. So how did this thing do? on the dyno. We're going to talk about those results. I've got other results. We've got a big block Chevy run by my buddy Andy. He's got a big block Chevy with an M1 Pro Charger going in a boat. So we've got those dyno tests. I can't walk over and show you that motor right now because unfortunately it's already off the dyno and on its way to its new home. But we're going to go over all the results on that because it's very cool and there's a great story with it. Right now we're going to walk over and show you my tales of woe with my Pontiac 347. So Let's go over. Okay, this is the 347 Pontiac 1957. This motor actually came out of a GMC truck and it was attached to the transmission, which is right over here. You can see that. That is actually a four-speed hydromatic transmission. It's an automatic transmission. It was a little bit of an adventure getting that transmission off. I've never done that before. Did you see that? I did the high-speed spin. Whoa, today at West Tech. So it was a little bit of an adventure getting that thing off because we didn't know I'd never taken one off before, but you have to unbolt the torque converter from what is essentially a flywheel. And the torque converter is sealed up to the flywheel because <laughs> when you unbolt that, all kinds of magic fluid comes out of there like when you take a torque converter off. So we had to take that off to enable for us to get the two piece uh, bell housing off. So it was a little bit of an adventure. But the other problem is once we got this off, we were able to bolt our Pontiac flywheel on here. Now there's a couple of things. If we take a look at this down here, we're gonna go in from the other side. So you take a look at this. Can you see in there? Can you see it here? There's a little closer one. See this right here? See that flange? That flange right there on the 57 Pontiac is smaller diameter than the flange on the later Pontiacs. So it has a different crankshaft. That means that the, the flywheel, it would bolt up because the bolt pattern was the same, but it doesn't center on that flange. The other problem we have is the flywheel's too big because this actually has a different bell housing that's right it's got a different bell housing pattern and when we put the flywheel on it sticks out past the dowels for the bell housing anyway so we need to change two things in order to run this thing on the dyno we're gonna have to change the bell housing or put a, a manual trans bell housing on there and we're hoping that that bolt pattern the bell housing to the transmission is the same as what we have on the dyno we're hoping that that works fingers crossed. The other thing we have to do is put a different flywheel on there, but that shouldn't be a big problem because they make a smaller tooth flywheel for the Pontiac. So hopefully that will cure the problem. We'll get the bell housing. We'll be able to run this thing. The other thing to take a look at is, here, take a look at this. See our cross under tube goes over here. This was a truck application originally ran a single exhaust. You can see here, we're gonna have to create a flange. I don't know if this is gonna fit on the dyno and be able to run an exhaust out. I hope that it does. If we have to make a dual exhaust for our stock exhaust manifolds, we will. And then obviously we're gonna run headers. Right now it has a two barrel carburetor. We're going to put a four barrel on there. And so this car was the, or this motor, this 1957 was the first year of the tri-power. I'm also going to run a tri-power. But you guys aren't here to talk about a motor that I didn't run. You guys are here for me to talk about motors that we did run. So let's take a look at some results First of all, on our LS, our aluminum LS with the carburetors on there, and then we'll jump over to the big block Chevy with the Pro Charger. Before we get to our data, I want you guys to check out a couple things I have up on the channel. First of all, I've got playlists for any different engine family. I've got lots of LS stuff, including NA and turbocharged stuff. And I have those broken down for small block Chevy, big block Chevy, Hemi, modular Ford, Honda. There's turbo stuff, blower stuff, nitro stuff. There's all kinds of stuff. So anything that you're looking for, including the other guys where I run the Buick and the Cadillac and the 4.3 liter small little LT1 stuff. So check all that stuff out. But I wanted to cover five different videos that I want you guys to take a look at because I thought that 
that they were really cool and they deserve a second look. The first one is how to maximize power out of your six liter. So check out that video. I'm going to put a link up right here. If you want to know how to modify your six liter, how to get maximum power out of it, check out that video. Video number two is a comparison between a 5.3 liter LS and a 5.4 liter four valve modular four, both NA and boosted. So good stuff. So which one's better, the 5.3 or the 5.4? Check it out. That video is going to be right here. The third video I want you to take a look at is how to cure low oil pressure on my particular my particular vehicle, which was a 2002 Silverado. The oil pressure started getting low. So check out what happened and what I went through to try to cure the low oil pressure blues. That video is going to be right here. Number four, we're going to take a look at on my five liter Ford guys. Would you rather modify your five liter 302 or maybe swap something else into it like a 351? Hard choice, but that video is right here. And the final one, number five, is going to be my turbo test. It is a low buck, cheap turbo test run on a K24 A2 Honda motor. So I ran a variety of different turbos. You can check out all of that stuff right here. Now let's get to those results. We're going to start off with our LS Dyna results. This is a, I think, a CT525 crate motor originally. It's a GM performance parts. It's an LS3 based motor, means it has 821 LS3 rec port heads. The compression is listed as 10.7 to 1. It does have a healthy camshaft in it, it's GM's ASA cam. It's a 226, 236 at 50, and 525 lift. It has the GM LS3 springs because this is a low lift cam. It comes with a single plane and no carburetor. This is an all aluminum 376 inch motor, like I said, basically LS3 based. And what I want to show you is we ran this thing with long tube headers, and this was also equipped with a Holly High Ram and two Holly Ultra XP carburetors. But what I want to show you is something interesting that happened while we were testing. So this is the first run. This is what we started out with. We ran an MSD ignition controller and that was about 29 degrees of total timing. So we put a, a kind of a safe um, timing curve in it and we can adjust the timing curve and I'll go ahead and show you what the timing curve kind of looks like and how we can adjust it on the MSD here. But you can see the curve here. We can start out at any uh, RPM we want. We can start out at zero and we can ramp this thing in. This thing goes all the way out to 11 or 12,000 RPM. Obviously, we're not going to ramp it that high. But I want to show you something that happened that was interesting during dyno testing because this is the kind of thing that can happen when you're not, when you're in a hurry and you're not careful about what you're doing. So if you take a look at this curve, it looks good. It, it's got a nice uh, horsepower curve, nice torque curve. We only started the run initially and ran it up to 5,500 RPM. But I want to show you, here's what happened on the next two runs. So this is run number two. And power's getting crazy. Power's getting crazy. Power's getting crazy. And the interesting thing is we made no changes to it. We made no changes to the carburetor, no changes to the timing curve, and what it turned out to be was actually a loose ground wire on the MSD. It's a ground wire that's bolted to the head. So that was not tightened up, and that's the problem, is the ground wire is vibrating, and the thing's misfiring real bad and resulting in these kinds of curves. So it's interesting to <laughs> make sure that you have all of your grounds tightened up. And now I'll show you what happened when we had everything right on this. So that's kind of where we started out when the ground was working. And here's what here's what we ended up with. As you can see, it was working before when, when the ground was kind of tight, but after running, it loosened up. Now this is with everything dialed in. We were running 32 degrees of total timing at the power peak. And this thing made this crate motor with the two Hollies on it and the high ram produce 570.5 horsepower at we ran it out to 66 or 6700 RPM and produced almost 500 foot-pounds of torque, 499.4. Had a nice flat torque curve. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this other one so we can kind of see a little bit better. And so this has a nice curve. I mean, it's wanting to rev out even though we have, uh, it's a fairly mild cam, a 226, 236, that ASA cam. But, you know, it still is working fairly well. But this is a nice power curve and this is the start actually for a combination that we're going to be adding turbos to. So what we're going to do is get rid of the carburation on top. We're basically going to remove the upper section, the lid of the Holly with the carburetors, and then put the single throttle body fuel injection lid on there. And then we will run two turbos 
blowing into that. And in between the lid and the lower section of the holly, we are actually going to sandwich one of those brick, one of the air to water intercoolers on there. So it will be intercooled. We have twin turbos. We're going to run two GT3582 turbos. And we've got that intercooler. We're going to run it all on E85 and find out what our turbocharged version of this NA starting point is. And this is actually a pretty good NA starting point. I mean, 570 horsepower is a pretty good amount of power to start with. It makes, easy, it, makes it easy to get to like, you know, four digit kind of power numbers that everybody wants to get to. So now we'll take a look at the LS. Let's check out that big block. To continue our today at West Tech, let's take a look at what happened when they ran a 489 big block Chevy Stroker with an M1 Pro Charger on it as a blow through carburetor application. It's very cool. As you can see, we're already up uh, making big power 964, but let's take a look and see what this combination was. This is from Andy Mitchell. It is a 489, so that's a 4250 stroke. And he didn't bore it all the way out to get to a 496, so that means it's 30 over. It has, it's, it originally started out as a Gen 5 block. It's got a healthy camshaft in it. It's a solid roller, but I think it's that Comp BR300 14, the blower camps. They're, list, they're listing it at a 660 lift, 258, 262 at 50 at a 114. It has 117 TND rockers on it. And they, they ran two and a two and a quarter inch show and fill uh, dyno headers on it. This motor it was nine and a half to one. It's got Race Tech Forge Pistons in it, Cali's Comp Star Rods, and a Lenati Voodoo Crank. They're running a dart single plane intake, and it had ported uh, Brodex 317 aluminum heads on it. And they ran a single, I think that it was a single demon, or possibly a single quick fuel blow through carburetor, and it had the the air hat on it. Now the interesting thing about this is it was going to be, it's actually going to be running an intercooler in the boat, but Andy didn't want to take the intercooler out of the boat because it's a big assembly. So what's going to happen? Several things are going to happen here, but let's talk about the power first. We can tell you, then we can get into the story. This thing at a little under nine pounds of boost made 964 horsepower and 847 foot pounds of torque. You can see it made, made over 800 from 4,600 all the way out to 6,250 or so. The interesting thing is this is going in uh, an outdrive and this thing is probably gonna be running closer to 55, 5,600 RPM where it's going to be making 884 horsepower, but it'll probably be making less than that in the boat. It's going to be blowing through the intercooler, which is actually gonna drop some boost because there's gonna be some restriction there and it probably will take some of the tune out. So, so it'll, it'll lower boost, the temperature will go up. They ran this on a mixture of 191. It will not be run on E85, it will be run on pump gas. This thing had about 28 degrees of total timing in it. So it's gonna be, run, it won't be running out here at 62 or 63 or 6400 RPM where it's making 964. The drive isn't really set up to accept that kind of power output. <laughs> so they don't wanna ruin the drive on it. And this thing will be running, like I said, 55, 5600 RPM where it's gonna be in the like, you know, they're thinking it's gonna be in the, 840 or 850 with the intercooler running the way that it's supposed to be. So this is a good combination, nice little stroker, big block Chevy. It has that M1 supercharger on it, which is not, you know, amazingly powerful, but it's certainly capable of, <laughs> of right near a thousand horsepower, which is, you know, a good number for any big block. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, you can see there's a lot of stuff going on at West Tech all day. Every day, they ran the big block over the other dyno. We ran this thing, actually we ran this technically last night, but it was up here and I was doing more testing with it. We were configuring it for the turbo application. I was out fiddling with the 347 Pontiac, getting that not to run. The day before I was doing the Dodge, getting that not to run. So it was finally nice to see something actually run. All right, if you're older guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, more testing with this under Boost coming up.